Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Welcome back to ET426 Power Electronics 2. And today we will continue for the second part of uh, other converter topologies. And this will be the last uh, lecture for this semester. Okay, for my part. Okay, in part 1, we already covered the push-pull converter. So, in this second part, we will cover the full bridge converter, the half bridge converter, and finally the current fat converter. This is the first converter that we will cover out of the three that we will cover in this lecture, which is the full bridge converter. Okay, this is the full bridge converter it had a similar operation with the push pull converter but the difference is uh, the push pull converter if you still remember it have uh, two primary windings but for this uh, full bridge converter is only have one primary winding but the this primary winding is uh, regulated by four switches okay we have uh, switch 1, switch 2, switch 3 and switch 4 uh, following this sequence and the four switches are uh, turned on alternate, alternately to apply a proper voltage for the primary windings the output voltage of this uh, converter is equals to 2Vs multiplied by Ns over Np multiplied by the duty cycle and if you look closely uh, at the output side of this uh, converter, it is the same with the push-pull converter at the secondary side. Okay, the only difference is at the primary side. All of these are the same with the push-pull converter. The full bridge converter will have a switch pair. Okay, we have switch one and switch two, and then switch three and switch 4 so what you mean by having a switch pair is if the switch 1 is on switch 2 will also on okay and then if the switch 3 is on switch 4 will also on okay, the same thing happen when this one off this one must also off okay in this slide we can see that the uh, switch pair okay when the switch 1 and switch 2 both will be closed during this time during the period of dt and then uh, there will be a period where all of the switches are uh, turned off or open and then after the half cycle of the duty cycle uh, or half of the switching uh, duration we have switch 3 and switch 4 turn on Okay, for the period of DT during this point okay and then this will be the voltage at the primary winding we will see the detail about this in the next slide okay in this slide you can see the full bridge converter as well as the switching sequence okay for switch 1 and switch 2 and this one is for switch 3 and switch 4 this is the voltage at the primary winding okay that uh, occur due to the switching sequence so we will look at okay when the switch one and switch uh, two are close so let's say we consider this okay switch one and switch two we close mean that this is the short circuit and this one is open okay can see that the flow of current will be like this okay the current will go through this loop okay and then we'll come out from this loop okay and this will result in the voltage occur at the vp will be equals to vs okay so we are looking at this portion okay so that's why during this time the VP uh, is equal to Vs okay, now we will look at another case the 
second sequence this we have switch 3 and switch 4 close okay we have switch 3 and switch 4 close and then this one is okay off Open. okay so we have the flow uh, of current will be this one okay come to this point coming to here and then at this point come and go to this negative point so at this point it will receive the negative PS okay so that's why we are looking at this point we have negative PS okay we have another one that when both uh, the switch 1, switch 2, switch 3 and switch 4 okay all the four switch uh, open so this one will receive 0 okay so during that time this uh, primary winding didn't receive any voltage from the source so that's why during this time it is 0 Okay, now in this slide we will <coughs> see how we can attain the voltage here okay the vx i mentioned before the vx is the voltage at this point okay you measure from here to this point okay so this is the vx okay so now we consider the first case when the switch one and switch two are closed Okay, switch 1 and switch 2 are closed we know that the current will flow like this okay and then here like this okay we receive Vs at this point okay and then because this is positive this will be okay uh, the current flow from here so at this point the dot point it will be positive this is positive and this one negative negative so this one will turn on okay during when the switch one and switch two turn on because this is positive at the anode so this one will turn on how about this one this is anode and this is negative okay this is anode and we have we have anode here and then we have negative at this point so this diode will turn off Okay, then we will continue. Okay, now because we have the positive at this point, the current will go like this. Supply to the capacitor and then supply to the load. Okay, and at this particular point, Vx will be connected directly to here. So, okay, so the voltage received by the Vx will be the voltage at this point, the secondary point which is Vs equal to uh, which is equals to Vs multiplied by Ns over Np okay and for the second uh, second period which is at this point when uh, all the four switches are open so we receive zero voltage because there is no supply voltage from the source and then the third one is we have the V switch uh, 3 and switch 4 okay we have switch 3 and switch 4 uh, close okay so we we'll see what happened delete all of this okay okay when we have uh, switch 3 and switch 4 close we know that the current we go like this coming to this point and then go here to this point okay okay when the current go from here to here we know that at this point it will be positive the dot point will be negative so this one negative negative positive and positive okay, because we have the positive here at the anode so this one will turn on 
no, because we have the negative here at the end of this one will turn off okay and then the current will flow like this okay supplying the capacitor and then to the load okay so at this particular point uh, we also have okay at this because you see that this is positive so it will receive the same voltage as the this one okay vs and s uh, vs multiplied by and s over np so at this particular point the voltage we act will also receive uh, vs and s multiplied by and s over np okay and the uh, sequence repeat itself for the next switching cycle <coughs> okay in this uh, slide it mentioned that the maximum voltage across an open switch is vs and not to VS like the push pull converter. Okay, so we try to see the the voltage. Uh, okay, let's say for the first uh, switching pair, switch one and switch two close. So the current will flow like this. Okay, and then the current will flow like this. Okay. So at this particular point, okay, uh, here the voltage here will be zero uh, because it is uh, short circuit, okay. But for this particular switch, we we first we we investigate about the switch number three, okay. At switch number three, this point is connected to the BS, okay. And how about this point? Okay, this point will be connected to the this point at the negative terminal. So the voltage across this will be Vs. Same with this. Okay, at this particular point, if you see closely, at this particular point, it will be connected to this Vs positive, and this one will be connected to negative. So at this bucket, uh, particular switch also it, it will experience the voltage of Vs so this gives a full bridge advantage in terms of the rating of the MOSFET okay if you want to use the switch for the push-pull converter you have to uh, make sure that the voltage rating uh, is double of the VS. Okay, let's say VS is 200. You have to manage uh, for push pull converter. You have to make sure that the rating of the switch is uh, more than 400. But for if you want to use uh, for full bridge converter, you only need a lower rating uh, switch. Okay, that can support until 200. Okay, for our example just now. Now we move to the next converter which is the half bridge converter. The operation of half bridge converter is almost similar to the one uh, in full bridge converter. However, uh, in full bridge we have four switches but in half bridge we only have two switches here and the other two is replaced by the capacitor. And this capacitor the requirement uh, that the value of the capacitor must be very large uh, and then they must be equal in value we need it to be large to ensure that we have a constant voltage okay at this particular point and then we need it to be equal uh, so that the voltage of the vs is equal equally divided between the two capacitor and for this uh, output side of this uh, half bridge converter is also the same with the uh, push pull converter however if you see from the output voltage equation the the equation is v out equals to vs multiplied by ns over np multiplied by d so the difference between this and the one in the full bridge is in full bridge we have two 
2 vs multiplied by ns over np multiplied by d uh, whereas in half bridge we only have vs no okay we don't have the term 2 in front of here okay so we know that uh, if you are using the half bridge we will get half of the output voltage compared with the one using the full bridge converter the switching sequence for the half bridge converter is also the same with the full bridge in which uh, for the first uh, cycle here during the uh, period of DT the switch one will close and then there will be a period where both switch one and switch two is open and then next one uh, during half of the uh, switching period uh, the switch 2 will turn on for the amount of uh, DT okay and then for the voltage at the primary winding uh, if you want to compare to the full bridge converter in full bridge uh, when uh, the first switch pair is turn uh, is closed the voltage at BP is Vs okay but now in half bridge the voltage is Vs over 2 okay so it have the same shape with push pull and full bridge but half in the value okay for the VP okay for the operation of this uh, half bridge converter when the switch one uh, is closed Okay, so when this one is closed, it, it will be short circuit. So when you see this is short circuit, and this one will be uh, open. So the current will flow from this uh, voltage source into this winding. Okay, and then it will go out and flow like this. Okay, and then we know that for the voltage applied to the primary winding okay will be equals to okay from point here it will be attached to this point here will be attached to this point so the voltage across uh, this winding okay from here to here will be vs over 2 okay so the same one is when the switch 2 is closed and switch 1 is open so you just uh, draw the line where the the switch is open uh, switch is closed and you will find that the voltage applied to the VP will be Vs over 2 as well okay and then if we look at the voltage Vx okay at the output side of the converter we will see that the amount of voltage it receives okay during the switch one close and switch two close okay at this point and this point uh, will be vs over 2 multiplied by ns over np okay so it, it also half compared to the uh, push pull and the full bridge converter Okay, and finally we are in the current fed converter so this is the last converter that we will learn uh, in this chapter okay, as well as in this course okay now we will look into the differences of voltage fed converter and the current fed converter for the current fed converter uh, the source is a constant current okay and the switch is used to direct the current and for the voltage fed converter okay the one that we usually learn uh, before this okay for uh, flyback the forward converter okay all of that uh, are constant source voltage and all of the are voltage fed converter so they have the constant uh, voltage source and the switch is used to control the voltage okay this is the comparison between the push-pull converter and the current fed converter okay 
so the different is because we want to have a, a constant current source so what we we do is we move this inductor here okay from here to the front at the uh, input side okay so what happened when we have a very large inductor at this point is that that when we have the inductor uh, it will provide a constant okay it's almost constant current source okay so when we have a voltage supplied to the inductor the inductor function is to resist uh, the changes of the current uh, through the line so by resisting the changes we have a uh, what we call almost constant uh, current source at this point okay so large inductor will provide nearly constant current at the input side and then uh, when the switch one uh, is turn uh, is closed what will what will happen is it will direct the current through the winding if you want so when we want to draw it okay let's say this one is closed so what will happen is we will have the current coming from here okay then it will go this point so this is what happened when we have the uh, switch one uh, close okay the switch will direct the current uh, it received from this point okay from the ilx here to this uh, switch and then complete the loop okay and then for the switch 2 it will direct the current through the winding p2 so the same one if we uh, close switch to here so what will happen is the current will flow like this okay through this winding and come out to this one okay uh, and then when both switches are closed the current will divide evenly within the winding so now we have a third case when we have both of the uh, switch okay, are closed okay when both of the switch are closed what will happen is at this junction here the current will divide by two okay so let's say this is ilx okay the, if the current here is ilx the current going through here is ilx divided by 2 and then coming down here is ilx divided by 2 okay so the current divided uh, divides evenly between the windings and then for the this current fed converter at all time at least one switch must be closed okay to provide a current path Okay, it cannot be that any time the both of the uh, switch are open so the current okay because we have the inductor here the current cannot go anywhere okay so for the current fed converter at all time at least one switch must be closed okay so that's the difference Okay, now we move to the current fed converter analysis. Okay, we want to find the equation related to this converter. But to do that, we have to make some assumptions. The first one is we want to assume that the value of the LX here is very large and the current in it is a constant ILX. Okay, this one will be constant because the value here is uh, large. And then we also assume that the transformer is assumed to be ideal. Okay, the transformer we have here is assumed to be ideal. Okay, this is the analysis of the current fed converter. 
when the switch one is closed and uh, switch two is open so what happen if we have this switch uh, one close okay and this one is open okay uh, we have uh, when the current okay let me show you how the current will flow like this okay so when the current is going into the dot point the current will leave from the dot point okay so the current will leave from the dot point so at this particular point uh, this one will uh, turn on okay because the current flow like this uh, how about this one this one if the current is leaving from this point okay so it means the direction of current will be like this okay so it, it will be blocked by the d2 so d2 is uh, now is blocking the current so this one is off so we know that the current will go this way and then to the load okay the current uh, id1 okay which is the current here is equal to the uh, ilx okay the current that coming to the winding here multiplied by np over ns so this is just a normal uh, transformer relation okay the i at the secondary will be equal to the i primary multiplied by p over ns and then for the vp1 okay the voltage occur at this uh, particular winding okay for for this case we cannot do like the push pull converter where we connect to the source and okay we, we know the voltage applied to it okay because this one we have the inductor okay so it is different story we, do, we don't have a direct connection okay from the winding to the uh, source voltage so the voltage across this uh, primary winding will be due to the output voltage here okay so you know that this one when it conduct it will be uh, short circuit here so the voltage here will be applied to this uh, winding here okay okay the voltage will be directly connected to here this one will be connected to here so the voltage occur at this point will be v out Okay, at this point V out and then this one will be translated to the primary with this equation okay VP equals to V out multiplied by NP over NS so this is the voltage at primary one and then we have the this one is the VLX the voltage across this inductor okay you have to do the uh, KVL Okay, it is equal to Vs minus Vp1. Okay, the voltage here will be equal to this one plus this one. So when you rearrange that, it will be Vlx. The voltage across here will be Vs minus Vp1. And then we know that from here, the Vp1 is equal to V out multiplied by Np over Ns. And then the voltage across the switch here, okay, will be if you follow this okay this one will be connected to this point and this one will be connected to this point so the voltage across this v switch 2 will be this one plus this one so v switch 2 equals to vp1 plus vp2 okay and vp1 and vp2 will be will induce the same voltage from here so there will be uh two v out and p over ns okay so this is the voltage uh, across the switch 2 when the switch 1 is closed okay and then we have we can have a same concept applied when the uh, switch 2 is closed okay when the switch 2 is closed this one open so the current here okay will flow like this 
through this file okay. so this is the flow of current and then we know that okay now at this point the current is going uh, through the non dotted okay uh, non dotted end of this uh, winding so here it will come out from non dotted end okay it will come out from here okay so we know that the current flow here so this diode will allow it because the flow of current is like this so at this uh, secondary circuit the current will flow like this okay and then going back here okay because the current is flowing like this we know that the current must come from here so it will be blocked by this d1 okay so at this particular moment the id2 okay will be equals to i lx the current coming from the primary multiplied by np over ns and then for the voltage across the uh, primary winding number two here will be equals to the output voltage okay uh, multiplied by np over ns so the voltage here will be projected to the primary circuit and then the same we have the vlx okay the voltage across this will be equals to vs minus vp2 equals to vs minus v out multiplied by np over ns and like the one we mentioned before the okay the, the previous case when uh, we analyzed for the switch so this one also the same we have the voltage across this uh, v switch one will be equals to vp1 plus vp2 and then it is equal to 2 v out multiplied by np over ns so this is the voltage across the switch one okay finally we have a condition where uh, both switch one and switch two uh, are closed Okay, so when both of these are closed, okay, when switch 2 and switch 1 are closed, so what happens is the current here, ILX, will be divided equally, okay, through this point and through this point. So this one will be ILX divided by 2, this one will be also ILX divided by 2, okay. So because we have the equal current flowing to this uh, winding okay uh, equal current flowing to the uh, p2 winding and the p1 winding so this uh, uh, this equal current will make sure that the current at secondary winding is cancelled out so there will be Okay, so I divide evenly between the two primary winding and because it cancel out the D1 and D2 are both off. Okay, so both of them are off. And then because of this one is off, there will be no voltage that can be projected to the primary one and primary two. And then this uh, uh, when this happened, the voltage on each primary winding is zero. Okay, so the voltage occur at this winding and this winding is zero. Okay, this is the switching sequence and the waveform for the current fed converter. Okay, we have during this time from zero to T, this is the switching period. Okay, the switch one will be closed for the duration of DT and it will open okay, from here to here. For the duration of 1 minus d t okay same with uh, switch 2 okay there will be a duration where the switch will be off for 1 minus uh, d t okay during this time this it will be close close for the duration of d t if we see the are some period where both okay, switch are uh, close okay, at this point 
Okay, when both switch are closed, we have ID1 equals to 0, ID2 equals to 0. And we have IX, the output current will be equals to ID1 plus ID2. This will be 0 as well. And then for the VLX, okay, the voltage across the uh, inductor, uh, during this time, it is VLX equals to VS. And then during, during this time, we have the switch 1 close and switch 2 open. Uh, we will get the ID1 equals to this one, ILX multiplied by NV over NS. And then for this one, ID2 is 0. So the, the output current will be equals to this one plus this one. Okay, so you will get this value. And then during this period, for the VLX is equal to VS minus V out multiplied by NP over NS. So this one occur at the duration of 1 minus DT. Okay, so we can see that uh, we have this uh, duration for the period of okay, double of this. We have from here to here is 1 minus DT. From here to here we have 1 minus DT. Okay, so we have during this period of time 2 1 minus dt we have the voltage of this one and for the remaining one here we have the voltage of vs so we will use this when we want to come up with the output voltage equation later on okay in this uh, slide we can see that during this two period okay two period of 1 minus dt we have VLX, okay, the voltage across the inductor equals to VS minus V out multiplied by NP over NS. And the remaining time here, okay, for this one and this one, we have VLX equals to VS. So how, I, how can we get okay, the duration here? Do 2D minus 1T. So we know that the duration okay, from here here okay this is the duration of t okay and then we have this two period of this which is 2 1 minus dt so if you want to find the remaining one here and here okay uh, the equation will be t minus 2 1 minus dt Okay, and this will be equals to t minus 2t plus 2dt. Okay, and then here we have 2dt minus t equals to t 2d minus 1. Okay, so this is how we get this period. Okay, so during this period, okay, during this period, we have VLX equals to VS. Okay, now we have uh, the full equation. Okay, uh, to come up with the output voltage equation, we have to find the energy balance in the inductor. So we have uh, during the switch one, or oh, either the switch one or switch two close. Okay, only one of the switch close. We have VLX equals to this one, okay, multiplied by the duration okay, of the when this one, uh, when VLX equals to this value, this is the duration, and when the VLX equals to VS, this is the duration. So, what we have to do is we have to have the VLX, okay. We say that this is VLX1, this is VLX2, VLX1 plus VLX2 equals to 0. So we have to arrange the equation like this. Okay, equation like this. And then we have to solve for the value of V out. Okay, so we have to find the V out equals to 1. Okay, so this is I I did the uh, step by step how you can reduce the value here and come up with this output voltage. 
so here when you you can multiply this 2 and this one 2 minus 2d okay and then here you will multiply vs and this one come like this and then v out and v over s multiplied by this one then plus this voltage okay and then this part negative v out and p over and s you will move to the other side okay that's why it become positive and this one you remain at this side vs 2 minus d plus vs 2 minus d uh, 2d minus 1 okay this one okay so finally you can come up with this so at this point okay for this term this is just uh, when we do it this is the vs okay you factor out the vs and then it will become 2 minus okay sorry 2 minus 2d uh, plus 2d and then minus 1 because to vs this one you can cancel out and then multiply by 1 so the remaining one is vs at this point okay and then uh, finally we can have v out equals to vs okay uh, divide by this one 2 minus 2d okay this one and then when this one is moved to the other side it will become ns over np okay this is np over ns when you move to the other side it will become ns over np so this is the final equation for the uh, output voltage of the current fed inverter okay we will look at several examples for the current fed converter okay this is the first one example three uh, we have a current fed converter has an input inductor lx okay this is the the one in the uh, input side that is large enough to assume that the source current is essentially constant okay and then the vs is 30 volt and the load resistor is 6 ohm the duty ratio of its switch is 0 0.7 and the turn ratio of the transformer np over ns is equal to 2 okay now we have to determine the output voltage okay the current in lx and then the maximum voltage across each switch so for the first one this is the straightforward you just have to plug in the you can use the equation v out equals to vs divided by 2 1 minus t multiplied by ns over np and when you substitute everything you will get 25 volt so this is pretty straightforward okay and then for the current in lx okay because we assume we can assume the ideal case where the input power is equal to output power so we will have okay the ilx okay this is the input current okay the current that flow to the i uh, to the lx we have the ilx multiplied by vs will be equals to v out square divided by r okay this is the output power and this is the input power so when we solve for lx you will get 3.47 okay v out square divided by r and then divided by vs okay vs we already uh, calculated okay uh, vs is given v out we already calculate uh, in the previous uh, question part a 25 volt so the total that we get for the current is 3.47 ampere Okay, and this is the maximum voltage across each switch so the maximum voltage will be 2 multiplied by v out and multiplied by np over ns okay the switch that is open will experience this voltage okay the switch that is closed the voltage will be zero okay so the value of this will be 2 multiplied by v out which is 25 and np over ns is equal to 2 
and you will get the V at V switch maximum equals to 100 volt. Okay, now we move to example number four. Okay, this is pretty much the same uh, with the example number three. So it's also a straightforward question. We have the input voltage of 24 volt and then the ratio transform ratio of NP over NS equals to two. The load resistance is 10 and the duty ratio of its switch is 0 0.65. So we have to determine the output voltage, the input current, okay, and we have assume that the input inductor is very large, okay. The assumption here is made so that uh, we know that the current is constant. And then for the part B, we have to determine the maximum voltage across each switch. Okay, for the part A, this is a straightforward. You have to find the output voltage just use this equation and you will get the answer of 17.1 volt for output voltage and for the input current okay you, you have to know that the input current will be equals to the, the inductor current so like we do previously uh, we assume that this uh, converter is ideal the input power equals to output power Okay, so finally you will, you can get okay uh, the I in or I L X equals to 1.22. Okay, pretty much the same with the example number three. And finally you have to determine the maximum voltage across each switch. So you have to know that for uh, current fact converter, this is the voltage experienced by the uh, the open switch. Okay. And in this case, you will get the value of 96 volt. Okay, and this is the final example, example number 5. A current fed converter has an input voltage of 30 volt and a supply load of 40 watt at 50 volt. So instead of giving the value of resistance, here it gives the value of watt and it gives the value of uh, output voltage so in this case we have to specify the transformer turn ratio and the switch duty ratio and we have to determine the average current in the inductor okay uh, for this one we have the equation for output voltage and we can rearrange the equation uh, to be ns over np equals to v out over vs multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1 minus d okay so in this case we have two parameter we have to find which is the turn ratio and switch duty ratio so normally we will assume one value and then we will uh, calculate the other value so in this case okay we know that the duty cycle of the current fat converter must be more than 0.5 so now we, we just set it to be okay uh, we assume it to be 0 0.7 so based on the value that we assume we will try to plug in into this equation and when we plug in we got the rate turn ratio equals to 1.0 which is okay lah. i mean uh, the primary and the secondary winding uh, is the same but somehow if we just assume some value and it turned out to be the value of this one to be a weird value let's say 1.2 or 0 0.6 something like that so you have to round it up to the nearest uh, value and then you have to recalculate back the value of t okay so that is how we do it okay so we assume one value and if it turn out that the turn ratio is a normal value i mean the integer value one two three something like that just a normal value so it's okay lah. but somehow if you it turn out to be okay let's say 0 0.75 or 0 0.122 some weird value so you have to round it to the nearest uh, integer value and then you have to recalculate back okay uh, using this equation you have to calculate back the value of duty cycle Okay, for part B, determine the average current in the inductor. 
okay first we have to find the resistance value okay because the one given to us is the output power the output power is 40 we have the output voltage of 50 so 50 squared divided by 40 we have 62.5 so this is the value of the resistance output resistance and then based on that we can find the uh, inductor current or the input current okay it is the same so using this equation you can find the value of input current or ilx equals to 1.33 ampere okay thank you for your attention okay this is the last lecture for this topic and as well as uh, last lecture uh, for this semester okay so we already covered all the things that we have to cover for my part uh, and then I want to wish you all the best in your uh, final exam or the open book exam that you will have okay in the next few weeks okay uh, thank you assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh